Hi everyone, this is Freddy with Superbike Unlimited and we're bringing you another update on our KTM 2021 450SMR Supermoto project. So, we actually, our current video that uh, you probably just saw, or if you didn't, you should go watch, is processing and will be uploaded later. And as I mentioned, we have some things that we're gonna be picking up on this thing uh, in this video. So, we are gonna be, as I mentioned, we've got the new link on the bike. We're gonna be doing some shock modification. That's gonna come later. We have to pull the shock and we're going to shorten it a bit and um we are going to there's going to be some work in that so we'll go into that later and also there's a chance that i may test out another shock it's kind of up in the air but uh we are considering trying a different shock absorber and just seeing how that goes because we haven't used anything else really on these bikes other than wp or standard on whatever bike in the past or the uh Olin stuff which we really like so We'll see how that goes but next up what we're going to be doing is we are going to install our revised intake so i'll go ahead actually while we're at it i'm just going to pop the cover off of this thing and it always feels a little sketchy to me and we are going to be changing this so this is our current intake system with our second injector and um essentially what we're going to be changing is trying to get a little bit better angle at the throttle body this one does work well makes really good power but i i think our efficiency is down so as i mentioned in the last video i don't necessarily expect us to make a power gain with this change although we may the big thing i'm expecting is improved efficiency not something i'm horribly concerned about but anytime you can improve efficiency i think that's a positive and we also have a, a cool new dna air filter this guy right here this is, we're a huge fan of DNA. We, we actually prefer those for pretty much everything. And uh, DNA was kind enough to do a performance analysis on this engine. And we basically provided them with a bunch of specs, power, revs, displacement, of course, and the concept here. And they took their R&D department and developed this filter to work with this special intake. So it looks kind of like the, the one that's on there, but I think it's a little bit smaller, which is something we were hoping for yeah yeah this one is just a little bit smaller so i think that when we get it mounted we'll just have a little more room in there which will be a plus so i also think it's just going to be a better filter um, so that's going to be going on and then here is the revised intake so the main concept here is simple and it's just that you can see that that path there is a little different and in there you can really tell it's basically just going to aim it directly at this guy right here so these you can see uses a rubber o-ring to seal on that and then we use that to mount it stops it from moving so what i'm going to do is just pop this guy off pop the other one on and then we'll probably just throw it right on the dyno we actually have uh customers drz uh on the dyno now that we're doing some stuff obviously those aren't the fastest in the world and we put a, a dual exhaust on it and did some dyno tuning uh carbureted of course so it's actually running pretty well. Not like this, but you know, it's making 40 something horsepower, which is not bad for one of those. So we'll get that thing off the dyno. I'll get this put on and hopefully it's a pretty straightforward swap. It should just be as simple as popping the old one off, putting the new one on. And uh, if I don't have to remake the fuel line or anything like that, it'll be really easy for us to test it right away. And realistically, we're probably gonna see pretty early on that we need to make some adjustment. I'm guessing we're gonna have to pull some of the fuel numbers down to get this thing to be a little bit more it's probably going to be really rich i'm guessing because so much of it's going to go straight into the to the intake instead of kind of washing down into it now so all right i'm gonna get right on that all right so i've got this thing on everything kind of just worked so we have same fuel line same loom and everything um this filter as you can see is a little bit smaller so that works great but uh overall pretty snug fit um, but yes, we've got everything installed in here um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and do some testing. I probably won't record that just because it's not that exciting watching me do pulls in the dyno, but we're going to see what happens, see if this thing is, what, what changes are made, if any. So that's coming up. Okay, so that's a wrap. We've done several pulls, a lot of pulls. I wanted to test several different things. And as I was kind of expecting, and I, I don't want to say afraid, I was, I, I was cautiously optimistic that we might see more power no power gains whatsoever from doing that but what i did find is that it is a slightly more efficient setting and i do mean it's very marginal um probably uses four to five percent less fuel this way 
So that's something I think that's important. Um, anytime you can save fuel, that's a, that's a positive. It means you can carry a smaller load and in the end you're, you're outputting less crap into the atmosphere, that's a plus. So the, uh, the thing is I did have to do some work to get there. I noticed, um, fortunately of course we use our Taipan ECU and, and we have full access with the software. So I did find that we had to change some settings. I was focusing specifically on there's some uh, second injector percentage and phase settings. I had to change a bit there to get the power uh, back up. So essentially when I did this at first, it made a little bit less, like a horsepower and a half, two horsepower less. That's about as much as we gained with the second injector to my recollection. So naturally that's not right. So what we've done instead is uh, just, I adjusted that stuff. I did some testing, several different pulls. And what's nice is with this thing, and I can't show you some of these numbers because it's, it takes a lot of time to develop some of this. So um, what's helpful is with this map selector here, what we can do and what I often do on the dyno is I'll try several different things I want to test. Like I'll make all the maps the same, except for whatever va variable I'm testing, be it ignition timing or uh, you know phase or ejector contribution or percentage, whatever. And that allows me to quickly toggle and do back and forth tests. Like, okay, that seemed better, but let's throw it back on the other one, ABA style testing. So um, net result, back where we were horsepower wise, using a little bit less fuel. That's a positive, so I'm good with that. And then next we're going to be working on the shock absorber. So we'll come back at you with that. All right, so um, we I really haven't been able to enjoy this thing as much lately as I would like to, but have been able to ride it a bit. You saw the link test, which I thought was pretty good. Obviously, I mentioned the bike was really tall and I didn't like that. I'm not a tall guy. Um, so that's probably one consideration there. And just in general, my riding style, I felt that it felt a little edgy um, and I didn't really have the confidence that I needed, especially in slower corners. So naturally what we're gonna be working on today is we're gonna do a full service. It actually needs um, a few things. We're gonna be swapping out some bearings in the swing arm because I kind of just reuse the, the original ones from the OEM swing arm when we first put this in due to a, a parts availability issue. Not really optimal. And uh, so we're putting some freshies in there. Tex is doing a full oil change and of course using Motul 300V, our favorite oil. And uh, then of course we're gonna be servicing the shock and we're gonna shorten it to accommodate the geometry numbers that I have in mind. And we'll just take you over there. Texas got it on uh, in the suspension work area now and essentially what we're going to do is just reduce the overall length of this shock this does not have adjustable ride height like some Olin shocks do and some other brands out there um, so what this has to what this means is it's done internally and effectively what we're actually doing is reducing the stroke of the shock which is not a big deal because it's not like we're jumping the bike we're never going to bottom this thing out or anything like that um, so that's what you have to do if you want to achieve a certain length on a, on an Olin's TTX 44. You basically, I mean, there are other ways you could technically do it by like, you know, having milled components manufactured or something to achieve a certain length for the bottom where it mounts. But we're not doing that. We're just doing it the conventional way. Just going to go ahead and uh, and shorten it internally. We also just wrapped up a, a really cool suspension project for one of our favorite local customers. It has a super nice. Um, KTM 500 and uh, we actually just did a, a nice set of our TTX cartridges with the same actually uh, identical valving spec that we're running on our bike now which is a fully custom shim stack and uh, super stoked to see him try this stuff out it looks really cool actually with the uh, the silver and red accents kind of worked out better I wasn't really sure I was gonna like that but anyway back onto this basically what we're doing and also I thought the bike even with I mentioned before we raised the front to try to get the um, the trail sort of in the ballpark of where I wanted it, but it was still kind of nervous feeling for me. So what's going to be cool, we're going to shorten the shock pretty considerably, several millimeters. And uh, in doing that, I'll have the ability to have a little more flexibility with the ride height in the front and the trail should be a lot more like what I'm used to on a bigger bike. Shouldn't feel quite so nervous. It's still going to steer like crazy if we want it to, but it's not going to be so kind of flicky feeling and nervous. So that's going to be nice. And lastly, Tex is doing the last bit of our titanium bulbs. There was a few odds and ends that we didn't do previously. Looks like he's already got several of them on. Yes, yeah, so there's a couple here. There's one, this actually goes on the engine. This is a, it's a crank stop, the, the bottom uh, one? Crank locking bolt. Crank locking bolt. 
So that one we swapped out. It's kind of a really unique bolt. It's really cool because this comes in that big kit. And then the other engine bolt, which was just a total pain in the ass to get to. Um, the exhaust actually had to come off to swap that one out. That's this guy here. And the other one is this one. So once we get all this done, I'm going to weigh the bike again. I'm really curious to see. It's been a while. I think it should be a bit lighter than the last time. Even though we've added a few electronic components, I'm expecting overall it's gonna, it will have come down a bit. And then we also have these, of course. These are a chain adjuster. And some of the other ones, I really have no idea what they are. These, it turns out we've already used other bolts for those, so we're not gonna need them. The cylinder head bolts, I'm sure Texas is gonna figure out where those go. I kind of just looking around, didn't know where they went. I kind of assumed they were these. Uh, but doesn't appear to be the case. So I don't, yeah, I don't know where those go. Uh, we'll find out. And then this one, we might've already used this. This is probably an engine bolt, but these are just a few extras that I wasn't sure if we had replaced with titanium prior to getting our full titanium kit. Alrighty, so we've uh, gotten everything wrapped up on this. Our shock is back in place. We did have to do some adjustment. It's really become quite the game of, um, <laughs> basically chasing the correct preload along with our length and this preload adjust on there. It's not been simple. Um, so base and the fact that we're running this linkage, that's really been sort of the source of all of our uh, um, complications. But we've had, because of this link, it totally changes the way the shock mounts. And you can see down here, this is just all very different from before. And what we used to do is we ran a spring collar on the bottom that allowed us to drop the whole spring down. Give us a lot of freedom in terms of setting preload because obviously the other limiting factor for spring preload is the way it's mounted at the bottom down here and also the adjuster here at the top. That's, uh, you know, it's a pretty straightforward concept, but you can imagine obviously if the, the overall length of the shock is a certain amount and you have this top and bottom mounting area, um, if, you if you reduce the stroke too much, there's just gonna be essentially always preload on the spring and that, that minimum preload amount might exceed whatever your target is. Um, so in our case, um, we do have kind of a range that we want to stay in. And in order to stay in that range here, we've had to modify our preload adjuster, had to cut some material away, and we've also had to modify our bottom spring collar. So it's been a little bit of work to, to maintain that. Um, not exactly the simplest thing. But we're there, everything's okay. Um, you know, it's all perfectly safe and everything. It's just a lot of work sometimes when you're when you're chasing this kind of thing. And it's all sort of prototypical. That's the that's kind of what we do here. And uh, sometimes you just wind up dealing with this kind of stuff where you're just constantly taking an expensive component and cutting it and modifying it and that kind of thing. So um, I think now we're gonna have a pretty good setting. I'm pretty happy with uh, the numbers that we have on the motorcycle now in terms of our swing arm angles and trail. Um, we may still consider trying a lower offset in that triple clamp. I'm just curious how it may feel and how it may affect grip levels, but, uh, it's just something we're going to consider for now. I'm just going to try it like this and we'll go from there. You can see how everything looks. Also, we did finally machine off some of the stuff that we didn't need on this MX bracket. You can see that's gone now. You can sort of see it's sort of got a mirror finish and then same thing on the bottom. It's all gone. So all that stuff that was for the moto stuff, it's all gone. That knocked off several grams. So I think we're going to weigh this thing and kind of see where we're at. It should be about as light as it's going to get. All the titanium's installed. Everything's good to go. The one thing that's kind of a bummer, and I don't know if it's going to work out this way. I'm, I was hoping to ride this bike this Sunday, but I had to get some uh, emergency surgery on my jaw. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't seem like it, but I've actually got some stuff in here. And... Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to ride or not. I probably shouldn't, but I really want to. So we'll see. I don't know. Doctor didn't say don't do it, but he strongly advised against it. So we'll see if it feels like it's healed up enough in a couple of days, then we're going to do it. If not, then probably going to be it for maybe the year. We'll see. But the uh, bike is ready to rip. So hopefully we can do some laps and we do have a shock on order that we're going to test. So stay tuned for that. Alrighty, so as you may have gathered, we're still at the shop. Bike's still sitting here with a fresh rear tire on it, so I did not get to ride. My jaw is still kind of jacked up and spent, today's Wednesday, so it's still been a few days. I just haven't quite recovered. So it's kind of a bummer. I really wanted to test out everything, but uh, there'll be time in the future. I'm actually planning on um, 
since I'm not sure how much more riding at CMP we're going to get in. Depends on the weather, really. It's all over the place this time of year. Um, I may go down to another cart track down in South Georgia, where actually one of our commenters has a facility. This dude that's sandbagging in like the Twins Cup or something this year. Um, he's uh, got a, a real nice supermoto track down there. We're going to go ride at that. And um, we, um, but anyway, so today what we're going to do, since we're going to wrap this video up, no laps, just going to be a boring, you know, just my fat head and a bunch of shots of the bike. You can at least weigh this thing in, see what it weighs with all the tie parts installed and in the current spec. This is pretty much exactly as it would be run. It's got some fuel in it, fresh new rear tire, front tire that's just kind of got some scrub laps on it. So it should be a pretty realistic weight. And we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll see where it's at. All right, so we've got it on the scales. Um, you can see the stand is not touching. And it looks like we are weighing in right at 241. I'll be honest, I'll have to go back and watch the original video. I have no idea what this thing weighed before, but that seems good. So hopefully it's a, it's a good number. We'll compare it to the other one and come back in just a second. All right, so I just went back and checked the tape. And in fact, the bike weighs exactly what it weighed when it was bone stock. And some of you guys are probably like, well, what the hell? That doesn't make any sense. You've invested all this money in lightweight products and stuff. And, and here we are with essentially the same weight as the original bike. That's a good point, but I do want to explain why, and it makes perfect sense. It's first and foremost, these are a big factor here. We've gone to a really proper and dare I say much more robust fork that's got springs. You got to keep in mind the original fork on this bike's got no springs in it. So massively lighter than these forks. It's a huge difference just in that. So that's one thing. And matter of fact, I think we're actually building a really trick fs for somebody which will just give you a sneak peek make sure there's nothing i can't show yeah i think everything's okay but we're building a really nice fs it's kind of a mess over here because we've got a couple of supermoto projects going but the uh this is uh, a bike that i think came in with the stock forks i'm pretty sure so we may be able to weigh them but um that's going to be a really trick one to, to keep an eye out for where uh, it's going to be a super cool customer bike but anyway back to ours so there's a few things here to look at Yes, it weighs the same amount of stock, and you may have noticed the percentage if you watched the original video is more biased towards the front now. That's a big reason why, is these are substantially heavier. The um, other thing is that we have a lot more data and um, sensors and things like that on the bike now. So we have all this extra wiring for this setup. We have obviously this new display that we didn't have previously. We replaced the really crappy plastic stock hand guards with something that's actually going to survive a crash and offers a modicum of protection for our controls here these are considerably heavier but a lot more robust of course handlebar switch and then of course last but not least we've got a dual exhaust that's for sure at least an, an extra pound by adding that second canister and that extra tubing maybe more um, so that's why with all this titanium and every other thing that we've gone out of our way to try to reduce weight and battery and all that we found that we're kind of back where we are and we also have there's some other stuff under the seat that's kind of hidden but there's an there's an lambda controller for this guy and there's a lot of stuff on here so even though we're back at the starting point we have a much much better motorcycle the the gains and weight from that fork i mean there's no comparison the original fork they're not bad but everyone complains of chatter and of a lack of really good feeling on the limit that's not an issue with these. These forks are amazing. They, they, I, I would put these against anything out there. I, I truly don't think we could find a better solution for the front end of this motorcycle. So well worth the trade off. So yeah, we're stock weight, but we have a way better bike. And with that, I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Sorry we didn't give you any track footage or any massive developments on the bike. Obviously there's some big changes here, but um, you know, relatively uninteresting to look at. Hopefully you've still enjoyed this video. We really appreciate you watching. Be sure to like this video, comment below and subscribe to our channel. And keep in mind, we're gonna have some really cool stuff coming up. Of course, we're gonna keep the pushing on this. We have several things we're gonna be testing in the near future, pushing engine development a bit further, trying some different parts, more suspension components. And there's some other things that I can't even talk about, but there's some really crazy stuff that's in the pipeline for this motorcycle to actually get our weight down below where it is now pretty substantially if everything works out the way we'd like. So a lot of really trick stuff on the way. And we may do some documentation on this one. This is gonna be a really cool Husky. Um, I don't know if the customer wants that to be uh, focused on in a video. If he does, a lot of guys don't, then we'll do some, we'll feature that in maybe our next one because that's gonna be a super cool build. I think uh, 
a very proper bike by the time we're done. So once again, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one.